This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, good morning. So yesterday we discussed right uh, how to configure service account and uh, what are the types of service accounts, right? So there are three types of service accounts we discussed: static service account, pass through service account, and mapping service account. I shared a OSB project with you uh, instead of recreating everything because technically all the components we know how to configure the proxy, how to configure the pipeline, how to configure the business service, inside pipeline, routing action, and any, any transformations or whatever required. We know all this uh, technical pieces, correct? So instead of spending uh, much time on configuration, what I did, I shared a OSB project with you, and I asked you to test it from your side. So deploy it and test it, okay? So anyway, so as multiple as you as you asked so i want to show you how to test this project i mean deploy and test this okay so guys so what i want to do total three cases i want to show you three different cases we have right static service account pass through service account and mapping service account so to get the full feel to get the actual feel actually we need to have two different servers one is osb server and a separate uh, target server but we have only one integrated server we have only one integrated server, right? So maybe I cannot show you this mapping service account. Uh, I mean, I can show you the I can show you the mapping how to do this, but it's not two different accounts. I can show you success case, but not the failed case. Okay. Anyway, I will show you these three three use cases. So what we need to do, we need total two projects. We need to deploy two projects. One is the target server, card validation system in the target server. I shown you yesterday how to deploy card validation system uh, in our SOA server. Of course, it's not mandatory. Card validation system, no need to be a, just a SOA program. It can be any technology program. It can be a third party web service as well. Okay, but in our case, uh, with the limitations in the infrastructure, we have limitations in the infrastructure, right? We don't have everything handy. So what I did, I took a SOA service as my target service and I show you, I have shown you, right? How to deploy it in the enterprise manager. Then this part is completed. This is the step one you need to deploy. You need to deploy the card validation system. Step two, step two, what you need to do, you already provided an OSB project, but there are few changes you need to do before you deploy the code. Okay, what are they? Especially the business service. If you see the business service, we have three business services here. We have three business services. All three business services contains the endpoint of target web service, correct? So let me open the code, go to business services. We have three business services. Let me open one by one. Okay, in the business service, we can, we can see the endpoint, right? Uh, the target service endpoint, but here it's an existing code I'm sharing with you. So so it contains some existing URL, but I don't want that existing URL. I want to replace it as per our current environment. Okay, let me open this. This guy is stuck. Give a few seconds. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to open these three business services. In the three business services, they, there you can see the old, old visitor, I mean the existing visitor that I want to replace as per my, my local infrastructure. Okay. My target, my target service uh, card validation system will have a visitor, right? That visitor I want to place in all three business services. Let's see if it is back. Yeah, I got three business services. If you go to transport tab, if you go to transport tab, see this, there is some target visitor. There is some target visitor, but that's not our current visitor, correct? See, you can, if you go to enterprise manager, um, if you go to enterprise manager, so why infrastructure, you can get the concrete visitor. Go to so folders, we want to go to default folder. Here you can find the card validation system. It's card validation system. Get the concrete visitor. Concrete visitor URL. This is our concrete visitor URL. 
okay see this this is the current concrete twister my i card validation system concrete twister right so instead of this host name i can use local host it's not mandatory to use local host okay because I'm using local server, so I'm using local host. If, if the server is in a remote location, don't change the host name. Right, so this is the whole, this is the endpoint, but what is the endpoint here? You can see the different endpoint because this is a world code somewhere. I, I mean, uh, I prepared it in some other infrastructure and I am sharing with you. So this is the, this is the world URL and I want to replace with new URL. Okay, so up to this, so you don't need to give question mark still. Up to this is fine copy copy and come here replace guys click enter button in your keyboard once you paste the url click enter button in your keyboard are you good right now go to the other uh, other business service total we have three business services all three business service endpoints you need to change but click enter button click enter button in your keyboard Okay, this is one change you need to do before you deploy your code that so three business services modified as per new infrastructure or your local infrastructure okay done next this is the first change before you deploy the code second change is go to service account files wherever you see the password provide the proper password see here you see the password integration user my infrastructure as in, in the previous session i shown you right i created two users wl admin is one user integration user is one user okay so <clears throat> wherever you see the password provide the password i mean at the time of integration user configuration whatever password you provided that password you need to give pass through service account there are no passwords go to static service account uh, there must be again a password okay provide the password proper passwords i already modified these three files in the previous session itself done you need to make these three changes okay and observe observe the proxy files there are three use cases we are testing the first use case the first use case is static service account let's see the static service account if you see this naming convention static service account proxy open it if you go to transport tab sorry transport details tab see there is no security enabled so in this use case in this use case Static service account use case, it's optional. It is not mandatory to enable the security on your OSB service. We enable there is security enabled only on the target service that is card validation system. Okay, it's your choice on in OSB service you want to enable the security or not is completely your choice. If you want, you can enable it. If you don't, that that will not affect your service service account file. Okay, so I let me test the first uh, first use case. I will deploy the code. Project one. Let's see, it is showing something called project one, how it will be deployed. Let's see. Otherwise, I can deploy it as a jar file. Let me do that. Export it. Service bus resources configuration jar i want to deploy the entire project content based routing sorry test security project make a jar this is the, you know this approach right this is the standard approach for osp okay osp project some name name is not really matter done now go to SD console, you can edit. Now you need to import the jar. Click on the import icon. This is the import icon. Browse the jar on my desktop. It's on my desktop. I named it as OSB project. <clears throat> Done. So we got we got the project right. So the uh, security, the security project. You can see here 
you can see the first first one let's test the first one uh, static service account static service account proxy file of course you can test it from soap ui as well uh, I, I just started with soap ui meantime uh, i want to test it okay activate the session i forgot to activate the session activate the session after deployment so after activation you can uh, test your uh, project <clears throat> make sure guys the first use case try to understand the first use case there is no security enabled on the osb program it's a normal testing but internally when it is calling business service when it is calling business service this business service has a link with static service account where this static service account contains target server username and target server password okay um, done so if you if you want you can test it from here yeah so we also started i want to test it from here get the endpoint of this proxy file http colon local host 7101 endpoint question mark visitor okay you can give some naming convention i will give the same name cbs okay it is always a good a bit better idea to save the project first wherever you want i mean i i usually save my soap ui projects under soap ui folder okay done now come here and give some data customer number something some data give some data submit the request of course you can see your osb service internally calling your soa program right you can see the instance as well osb program don't have instance but soa program will have instance <clears throat> You can go to SOA Enterprise Manager and you can check the instances if you want. Okay. See, so you got the response. You got the response saying that your provided credit card is valid card. Provided credit card is valid card. Of course, you can see the SOA instance as well. You can see your OSB program is internally calling your SOA instance, SOA service. Right, sir? That's it. So it's a secured call uh, maybe you cannot see the security because uh, it's an internal call right internally service account contains the username and password so you got the request and some logic executed here some logic executed and then you got the response clear done now yes, sir. let yeah now let me go to the second use case what is the second use case in the second use case, we are using pass through service account. That means you must supply the user and password from the client, from the client. And in this use case, the limitation is the same user and password will go to the target server. The same user and password go to the target server. So your OSB server and your target server must have the same user. Okay, I can show you the I can show you the success flow. I cannot show you the negative flow here guys because our sova program osb program both are running in the same web logic server let's say if you have uh, different servers then you can configure the different users and uh, you can check this but at least i will show you the uh, success flow okay so if you go to the code let's test this pass through service account proxy file if you see here the basic security enabled basic security enabled okay let me test this guy i want to test this guy hmm, get the endpoint again pass through service account 
pass through service account and what i will do i will get the endpoint go to soap ui create the soap ui project it's nothing new i mean you just you can you have to do this uh, <laughs> that's what i assigned this to you but looks like people not able to test it service account oh it's not good Mission mark this is the one we want. So copy HTTP colon slash slash local post seven one zero one. Okay, and provide some name to this project. Okay, serious pass through. So, it, so this is a secured OSB web service, right? So it is asking you provide the username and password. Your choice, any username you can provide. I mean, your server-related username and password. Any, any in the sense, not user-defined. Okay. So now, if you want to test this guy, you can give any data, some some random data. Okay. Actually, this is a secured web service. I'm not enabling the security, but I'm testing it. Let's see what happened. So immediately we got a response saying that unauthorized. So what you can do, add the security, basic security you need to add here. Okay, and you need to provide the username and password. So we have three users in hand, WebLogic user, WL admin user. I mean, in our WebLogic server, in the previous session, I show you, right? How to configure WL admin user, integration user. Of course, you can configure any number of users. It's your choice which user you want to use for testing. I'm using WL admin along with its password. Okay, that's it. Just save the project. <clears throat> okay, now you can submit the request. Let me submit the request. I'll hit the request. So what happened here, whatever username and password you provided, that goes that goes to OSB. Internally, it goes to your target server as well. Okay, we got the response. You can see the provided card is invalid. It is saying the provided card is invalid. Done. Okay, I cannot show you the negative case, guys, because both the services, OSB programs, OVA program, both are in the same WebLogic server. So I cannot show you the negative case. But uh, for your understanding, the negative case is uh, OSB has some user that does not exist the target server. Okay, whatever user supplied by client, if that does not exist in the target server, while calling business service, it will fail. Okay. Right, so now go to the third use case. What is the third use case? Mapping service account. In the mapping service account, what will happen? OSB will have one user, target server will have a different user. So suppose in OSB, if you submit WL admin as user, WL admin as user, your target service, while calling the target service through business service, your business service will convert WL admin as Santosh or some other user, whatever mapping you did. You can see here what mapping we did in the, uh, Mapping service account. Mapping service account file. If you see here, what mapping I did, <laughs> this is the target server, remote user, target server user and password, target server user and password. This is the mapping we want to do. This is OSB user, left side is OSB user, right side is target server user. Okay. So in OSB program, if you receive WL admin as input, WL admin as input, while calling target service, the user integration user will be used in the security part, header part. Okay, let me show you this. This I, I can show you. Uh, let's get the endpoint mapping service account. Okay, so here you can get the endpoint.
question mark western go to soap ui as the project okay now give some naming convention So this is also a security project, so it is asking for the username and password. Okay, save the project. Let me go to the test screen. So here, if you see, um, same, same, provide some data. Okay, and here it is a secured web service. It's a secured web service. Observe this, what I'm doing. Suppose, suppose if I provide weblogic as the username and its respective password, its respective password. Okay, what will happen? See this, what is the mapping we have? Our mapping is, our code is expecting WL admin OSB user, WL admin OSB user. If we get this user, it will be mapped as, I mean, your target, we, we are going to send integration user to the target server. But suppose if you receive, if you receive weblogic in the, weblogic user in the input, OSB input, there is no mapping here. Weblogic, there is no mapping we configured here. That means your OSB accepts your input, but while calling the business service, it will fail. Okay, let's see that. Submit to request. See what happened? Internal server error. Internal server error. That means OSB accepted the input, but internally while it is going to business service, business service is configured with a service account file. This service account file is expecting a user called WL admin. If you supply WL admin, it will convert it into integration user and call the target service. You got the point, right? Okay. So suppose if you want to see the success response, you need to give WL admin. Okay, submit the request. Okay, we received the response A, 200, okay, that means success response. You can see the XML, response XML, we got the response XML. Right. So, but but in the I mean internally it is calling Sova service with a different user integration user. Maybe you cannot see that user here. The security part will not be printed in the Sova instance, but uh, you can get the expected results. <coughs> Let me open it. Let's see the instances. Okay, so if you want to go through the SOVA instance, because this is the target server, you can you can go through. I mean, there is nothing we need to check. Okay, so any questions? This is how you can test all three cases. All three cases, static service account, pass-through service account, and uh, mapping service account. Any questions as well? Okay, any questions? No. Okay, all, everybody is clear, right? Okay, now uh, I want to talk about configuration file okay there is something called configuration file so do you know in sova we have a concept called config file right in sova we have something called config file we use this we use this file we use this file uh, to modify server level properties i mean when we are moving the code from dev environment to test environment, test environment to product pre-production environment, pre-production to production environment. When we are moving the code from lower to higher environments, okay, there are some server-side properties. There are some server-side properties like uh, especially target service endpoints. Okay, I mean uh, this is the one, right? Uh, if you go to business service or if you go to Sova Composite you always configure the endpoint, right? Target service. I mean, reference component contains target service concrete visible. 
in sova in osb business service contains target service endpoint right so this is a server side endpoint i mean if the target service uh, went to a different server this endpoint will change this endpoint will change but how i mean suppose the dev environment uh, let's say let me take an example i have i have one dev infrastructure let's assume i have one dev infrastructure something like this uh, this is this is uh, we are talking about osb let's say an example of osb and this is something tomcat okay so the total total it is a dev infrastructure okay let's be, let's assume it's a dev infrastructure similarly similarly i have uh, another infrastructure before that let me draw something for you just for your understanding okay guys this is a tomcat server and we have a web service we have web service okay and here we have an osb program here we have one osb program with a proxy and pipeline and how to call the target service we should have a business service right we need a business service so this is the business service business service this is osb web service so something like this we do the communication right this is how it will call the target set correct so what we do in this business service area we provide the concrete visual of target service so let's assume this tomcat server contains a web service and its concrete visual its concrete visual is uh, dev hyphen c concrete visual just an example concrete visual how it generally how a concrete visual looks like something like this correct something like this the concrete visual looks like right the end point so but i'm just giving an example so that means here i should have dev hyphen concrete visual this is the configuration we need to do in the business service correct so this is the dev infrastructure suppose if i go to test infrastructure i mean i have i need to deploy my code into test infrastructure then what happened test infrastructure will have will have separate osb server test infrastructure will have separate osb server and a tomcat server correct so the something like this so i have a test infrastructure in the test infrastructure the concrete visual definitely it will change when you deploy the code into test infrastructure okay here the concrete visual may be uh, test hyphen concrete visual a different concrete visual service will be same code will not change code will not change but service will change okay i mean uh, endpoint will change code will not change you just deployed your target service into tomcat test environment test infrastructure then you will have a different concrete visitor okay then then in your osb program in your osb program you need to modify your business service according to the target server correct but if you see the business service in the business service we hard coded the dev dev uh, uh, concrete visitor here correct we hard coded the dev concrete visitor right so this is not uh, this is what what will happen if you deploy like this in the test environment you have a test osb server test tomcat server you deployed the tomcat service into tomcat server osb service into osb server okay as is without doing any changes if you deploy it what happened your business service is actually containing dev concrete visitor it's a hard coded url in business service so when you are testing your test environment osb program your business service control goes to dev environment target server is the point clear it goes to dev environment target server something like this because it contains because it contains uh, dev concrete visitor it contains dev concrete visitor so the control goes to dev dev tomcat server only but that is not correct right when you are moving the code to test environment you need to move the endpoints as well so for that what we need to do in sova we have configuration file concept right 
similarly in osb we have a concept called customization file without of course this business service manually you can modify but that is not a preferred way whenever you are moving your code from dev environment to, to test test to some other environment and finally it goes to production when you are moving your code from environment to environment it's not suggestible to modify something manually okay anything it may be single letter single character or a single word or a something you want to modify in your code it's not suggestible to modify manually we need to it's not suggestible to touch the code before you move move the code to next environment so what we need to do we should utilize a concept called customization file it is exactly works exactly like your configuration file in your sova in sova we call it as config file in osb we call it as customization file customization file okay i will show you how to configure this one so this is the customization file you need to configure okay now <coughs> so what i want to do let me take one example mm, any example i will use any existing example i will take okay mm, let's use uh, service virtualization project so what we are doing in service virtualization project we have a prox pipeline file which is calling a target service imps service right okay so what i will do imps service uh, our target service in this example our target service is a sova program which is deployed in the default folder in enterprise manager default folder we deployed imps service, ipms service correct now uh, to get the feel of test environment to get the feel of test environment what i want to do is i want to deploy the ipms sova service into test folder instead of default folder i want to deploy this into test folder okay let's see so then what happened ipms will have different endpoint yes sir no yes sir let's uh, let me go to this okay deployed your composites okay see here ipms program intel processor manufacturing system this is deployed in default folder here also you can see intel processing manufacturing system deployed in test folder okay so let's assume uh, the service which is in the default folder as a dev environment the service which is deployed in the test folder as a test environment because we have i mean uh, we have limitations in the infrastructure but i want to show you the use case i just created two folders guys okay let me go to test info this is the test one and in this uh, tab i will use the default one okay default folder this is the default folder ipms in default folder if you go to the next tab ipms in test folder so both have different endpoints you can see that open it see this is the dev url assume this is dev url assume this is dev url okay similarly we have test url test url let me go and get the test url right this is the test url okay i will change the host name as local host okay observe this guys these two urls are same or different service is same service side no change it is the same service i deployed it two different places the first deployment i am assuming as a dev environment second deployment i am assuming it as a test environment you can see two endpoints okay now now let me go to my osb program if you test the osb program we are content based routing right let me go to pipeline which project we thought of testing service virtualization sorry go to service virtualization 
I want to test service virtualization. Let's go to IPMS case one. Okay. So if I test this guy, if I test this guy, the control goes to dev environment because this IPMS uh, proxy is co internally calling the business service, IPMS business service. If you see the IPMS business service, it is it is pointing to dev URL. It is pointing to dev URL. See, this is the dev URL, right? Default folder name is the dev URL. You can see the difference. Yes, sir. If you see the difference between these two endpoints, only one keyword is different. This is default keyword. This is test keyword. The folder name is different in the URL. Okay. Anyway, let me. So if you if I test this one, if I test this service, I did not made any changes. I'm testing the default code. I'm testing the default code. What I will what will happen? Hmm, give some data. That's my full name, Dell Corporation. Processor model. I want to buy i3 processors, 100 quantity. If you execute it. If you execute it, you got a response. So where it went? It went to dev URL or test URL? No. Okay, go and check the instance. Our expectation is it must go to dev URL. Dev URL, right? Default folder. Let's see where the instance created. You see the recent instance, you can see it is in the default folder. That means dev URL, dev server service invoked, but not test server service. Okay, we are not calling this URL. Nowhere we are calling this URL. Okay, suppose as you now you have OSB program, so OSB program and the target server program. Uh, you deployed them, you deployed them. Uh, OSB program deployed into test OSB server, or server program deployed into Test so as well. Just an assumption. We don't have two infrastructures, right? So at that case, what happened? If you don't modify anything in the code, OSB code, it's still pointing to dev target server only. Your business service, your OSB business service is still pointing to dev target service because the concrete wisdom here it is hard coding. It is hard coding. Dev target. Right. So yeah. So. I don't want to modify it. I mean, of course, you can go to JDeveloper, go to the business service, go to the business service, and modify the endpoint manually, no doubt, before you deploy the code into test infrastructure. Let's assume, but but that is not suggestible, right? If you have 100 services, 100 business services, you have to modify all 100 business services. If you have 1,000 business services, you have to modify all the 1,000 business services according to test environment. That's not what we want. Okay, so what we want is I want to go with customization part, customization part. So the way how to build the customization part, it's very simple. Go to your OSB console, go to your OSB console. Where is it? Here, okay. Here you have a tab called admin. Go to admin tab, okay. So the steps, guys, I'm showing you the steps how to create customization file. You need to go to dev environment service bus console. Go to dev environment service bus console. Here you can see an option called under admin tab. If you go to admin tab, you can see an option called create configuration file. Create configuration file or customization file, we can say. Okay. So you so here you need to choose you want configuration or customization file for which which file. Okay. So let me uncheck everything. So I want customization file only for one business service. My business service contains a server level property that I want to modify. Go to your business service. Only this one I want. For this file, I want customization file. Okay. Suppose uh, let me go to create button. Only for business service, I am using this customization file. See, I got a customization file. Download it. Open it with Notepad plus plus. Okay. So what this customization file contains? You can see here. Your customization file contains a business service and its endpoint. Okay, this is business service path, business service location in your project, and you can see the URL somewhere here. Okay, URI table. Okay, you can see the URL. This is the URL, which is a dev URL. Okay, you can also see for, for every one endpoint, two entries will be available. If you want to modify endpoint in one business service, 
two entries you can see here two entries you can see these two entries we need to modify okay let's uh, replace the end point replace the end point with test end point test end point test and this one also i will change it actually you need to copy paste the entire url but i know the difference so i'm just simply modifying the keyword which is different between dev and test okay done i modified it so guys you can rename this file this the name of the file is not uh, uh, really a constant keyword you can modify this uh, any any naming convention done so i just hold up must be dot xml file right okay so now i just modified the dev end points dev url with the test url dev url with the test url now what you need to do you need to execute this i mean so see guys always first we deploy the code into dev environment and when you are deploying the code into dev environment we don't need any configuration file or customization file when you are moving the code from dev environment to test environment or some other environment you need you need this customization file okay so when you need this customization file first what we need to do already your code should be deployed into dev environment go to service bus and generate the customization file generate the customization file so this customization file we can use further in the next deployment so what we do next deployment suppose i want to deploy my code into test environment series of steps you need to follow series of steps you need to follow first you need to deploy target service target service into test environment okay then you need to deploy osb service into test environment okay and number 3 execute execute customization file this one execute this customization file customization file in test environment or some other okay so step 1 already completed step 1 already completed i deployed my sova program in the test folder okay i deployed my target service in the test environment osb environment okay osb service of course i am using the same osb infrastructure i don't have the second osb infrastructure so i am deploying it into i already deployed the osb program as well now i need to execute the customization file okay what we can do go go back to your service bus console go back to service bus console so what you need to do under admin tab under admin tab so first close all the files if you see any file is open close all the files close all the files okay now go to admin tab and here here you can see execute configuration file there is an option execute configuration file to execute it you need to create the session start the session so once you start the session execute configuration file assume this is a test to osb server so browse the configuration file it is in my downloads folder okay file name can be anything you can maintain any naming convention click next fetch done okay activate the session so now what you can do there are two things you can observe go back to your business service and see whether the endpoint updated or not just refresh your service bus console uh, go back to the business service observe the endpoint updated or not see the endpoint updated default to test environment okay and now if you test this if you test this service the control goes to test okay. environment test environment Okay, if you execute this, so you got a response. You got the response. Okay, but from where we got this response? Let's see. This is the dev infrastructure, dev environment of target service. This is the test environment of target service. See where we got the instance. Automatically, your business service will call the test target. because we updated the endpoints but not we are not manually editing the code we are using customization file to replace the keyword replace the endpoint 
you got it see dev environment still contains only the old instance there is no second instance but the test environment we got the latest instance okay this is the test environment any questions how to use this uh, customization file not yes, only sir, one business is, uh, service guys mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead go ahead process service also we need to in the same level sir. anything see by using this customization file you want to replace something some keyword you want to replace okay which is a server dependent property suppose let's say i will show you one more example suppose this is my proxy file okay this is my proxy file proxy file contains one endpoint proxy file we we create the endpoint right suppose i am not interested to use this endpoint i want to replace it i don't want to continue with this endpoint okay so what we need to do let's go to admin server create the customization configuration file or customization file mm. go to service virtualization project this time i want to create customization file with one proxy and one business service let's assume the one proxy two proxies i took two proxies and a business service okay three three files i included create okay i got the customization file uh, this one i will name it as two okay just for our convenience two go to the end point so here what i want to do business service business service i want to use the dev url in business service i want to use the dev url okay for one business service two entries you need to modify watch this file i mean read the entire file you understand what this contains so business service instead of test test url i want to replace it to dev url this is done okay now if you see the proxy where is proxy this is business service proxy endpoint also i want to modify okay if you see the second one yes sir let me minimize the first one let me minimize the first one first one minimize this is the business service entry i modified and minimized this is the second entry this is a proxy service proxy service i want to replace the proxy service endpoint i want to replace the proxy service endpoint see service uri proxy service sorry this is the second one okay so this is the service uri of your proxy service and you are not interested to continue with this endpoint i want to change it as case 1 hyphen 1 okay i just want to rename the endpoint so you can modify the proxy i mean whatever server dependent property you have whatever server dependent property you have in any specific file that file you can select and generate the customization file in the customization file it will show you all the possible properties which you can replace okay done now you can deploy this go back to your code okay create the session execute the configuration file okay before execution it's better close all the files close all the files now execute the configuration file configuration 2 now what happened this two keywords will be replaced business service will be replaced and the proxy also proxy end endpoint uri will be replaced we'll see okay now go back to design view designer view open the case one the pms case one and you can see see your proxy endpoint replaced proxy endpoint replaced it's the same way business service also you can see that is replaced with default url default url both you can do at the same time so in the customization file it is your choice what you want to replace with with all the files you need to select and create the customization file okay any questions as of now any questions no no sir clear okay. yeah uh, that's it for today guys let me stop the recording